It's unfortunate that the Hema Committee report was out in 2019, which was soon after the Me Too movement. And it would have been the best, best way for the Me Too movement to continue and uh, result in something uh, spectacular like that change that we have all been waiting for uh, uh, decades and centuries now. This Hema should uh, personally take on um, this, uh, uh, you know, the whole movement of coming out with a report in every town, every city, every industry and cinema definitely because although we are seen through a magnifying glass, we also have a voice and therefore uh, a message also goes across much wider through us. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I have serious issues with, um, you know, children, especially after the age of 12, not being given sex education in their schools. I've had to crawl back into the scene because uh, post the Me Too movement, which I, of course, got a lot of support uh, from mm. certain quarters. Mm. And uh, I've, of course, I had lawyers who came and stood by me and gave me pro bono support and everything. My industry, uh, by and large, discarded me. Hello, everyone. I am Trishti and you are watching News 18. Uh, today, I'm joined by a trailblazer uh, who played a pivotal role in bringing the Me Too movement to the forefront in India, uh, Vinta Nanda. Uh, Vinta is a filmmaker, writer, creative activist and uh, the editor of the Daily Eye. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us today. Uh, ma'am, you know, as someone who has been a powerful voice in this movement, how do you see this, uh, you know, resurgence of women speaking out uh, and, you know, talking about their stories? Uh, what do you think of the entire thing that is happening in the country? For me, it is uh, what I'd expected to be in continuation after the Me Too movement. And I wish it hadn't taken another five years for uh, the Me Too movement to have continued from where it got left off. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that the Hema Committee report was out in 2019, which was soon after the Me Too movement. And it would have been the best, best way for the Me Too movement to continue and uh, result in something uh, spectacular like that change that we have all been waiting for uh, uh, decades and centuries now. But unfortunately, the report was suppressed, as you must be knowing. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, there were all sorts of reasons given for why it should not be released. And mm -hmm. it's taken a whole five long years and we've come to 2024 for it, it to come out. Mm -hmm. But like they say, Derai Durustai, you know. And it is very important that it has come out. And um, uh, I'm sure that this is the next uh, step. Uh, although yes. we have a long way to walk, but it is the next step. And that by itself is very, um, you know, promising. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ma'am, like you said that the, you know, report took almost five years to, you know, to come out. And it took the government four years to present its findings. Uh, right. Do you think we need similar collectives across all industries to, to ensure the safety uh, and rights uh, of women? Most certainly. In fact, the HEMA committee report, I just wrote an article only today about it. Uh, mm -hmm. We need a HEMA committee in every uh, uh, film industry, of course, every uh, regional film industry and the Hindi film industry. But we also need uh, HEMA committee report reports coming out of all other industries, which are, um, you know, uh, it's not just, I mean, we do see the uh, uh, business of movies and cinema through a magnifying glass. But yes. the situation is no different. I mean, the people are us wherever in whichever other industry. Women mm -hmm. are not safe in this country, period. Mm -hmm. And uh, they find it difficult. It's even worse in rural India. Hmm. And uh, there's no film industry in rural India. It's uh, terrifying to even be alone there in the daytime, forget about being in the dark. So uh, we are talking of a country which is centuries away from the time that we live in. I mean, it is behind century by centuries right now. And yeah. women really need that uh, focus. I think the Hema, Justice Hema should uh, personally take on 
um this uh, uh, you know the whole movement of coming out with a report in every town every city every industry and cinema definitely because although we are seen through a magnifying glass we also have a voice and therefore uh, a message also goes across much wider through us yes 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 yes, yes. do you see uh, any systemic changes happening as a result of these revolutions that has come out in the light of the committee report you know uh, shishti i am a bit of a cynic after the me too movement mm-hmm. i understand that uh, you know before the me-, me too movement i did not know to be honest with you but mm-hmm. after the me too movement i realized that there's precious little you can do in the legal space because at the mm-hmm. end of the day you are now uh, you know placed in the he says she says zone mm-hmm. and uh, everything that's happened has happened behind closed doors and mm-hmm. even what has happened in the open there are many multiple layers of uh, you know protections and defense for the perpetrators more than the victims victim, you see yeah, and the survivor absolutely. so hmm. what happens is that uh, in the court of law there's precious little that you can do hmm. Uh, hmm. unless and until you know things are so gruesome like what happened in kolkata or what was nirbhaya or we hear every day happening which are in your face so hmm. uh, misogyny and patriarchy the way it gets um, uh, exercised in day to day lives is something that is very insidious it is very under the surface it's very mm-hmm. difficult to go to the courts of law and prove although i do believe that this is a step forward and we are going to get to the next level very very soon because mm-hmm. uh, i think this um, uh, we should not deny one fact that naming mm-hmm. and shaming by itself is good enough to um, you know make or at least terrorize these terrible men who mm-hmm. uh, practice this kind of misogyny uh, mm-hmm. on women especially helpless especially young especially women who don't have the power to uh, counter them so hmm. this is something naming and shaming is i think um, a huge punishment in itself right right ma'am uh, you know i have two questions from what you just said uh, it's definitely i mean it's heartbreaking that the crime has to be so gruesome with women for the government to realize that it's time to take action yes so what can be changed in that uh, uh, scenario ma'am what do you think uh, what can be changed you know let's get one thing right that mm. we cannot expect the change to happen overnight yes absolutely you're fighting with hundreds and hundreds of years of patriarchy and it is so embedded and entrenched in our societies and cultures that forget india worldwide it is hmm. it is it is a reality right so it's a ongoing battle that we are fighting hmm. but in that ongoing battle what does bother me a lot and hmm. that should bother everybody is that we are not putting those uh, blocks in place which will say like look at look at the scenario 10 years from now 20 years from now for instance i have serious issues with um, you know children especially after the age of 12 not being given sex education in their schools you know mm-hmm. that is where when the hormones start raging when they start you know where the confusion begins for everybody including you and me when we were at that age you know mm-hmm. there were so many questions who's there to answer them yes you know you can't leave it to parents because all the parents i mean we are talking of a country and a nation in which i think 70 odd percent of students are first generation uh, generation being educated mm. so i mean you can't expect them to lean on their own parents and expect that kind of education to be given to them at home mm. so that primarily i mean at least now right now if we were to put into place a mechanism for education to the 12 year old and onwards at least that kid is not confused at least mm-hmm. that kid is not going to learn on the job at least that kid is not going to be learning out of making mistakes because those mistakes are very costly the mistakes that a guy makes to learn what is right or what is wrong costs women their lives you know so mm-hmm. we have to i mean i don't know why people are not thinking correctly on this these yeah. there's a me too movement that happened now there is 
the hema committee report that's come out and yes this is very important that there be an outrage yes it's very important that men get named and shamed but what about the other men who are growing up and going to be soon joining the bastions of young, youth and business and you know be working in the workspaces are yeah. we ensuring that those boys and girls are prepared no we are not hmm so somewhere while we are working on what happens next in our own lives we have to look behind us and also look make sure that the future that we are um, mm. envisaging is safe for women right uh ma'am like you said that the naming and shaming also rightly propagating fear in perpetrators right but uh, it's also i mean if we look at the other way uh, the responsibility to fight these battles you know often falls on women themselves uh what are your thoughts uh on this recurring expectation that women must be the ones to to lead these battles and how do you think men can you know be uh helpful in uh taking this conversation forward so i do believe that there are uh, many men who are part of this uh, movement that we are hmm. uh, part of right hmm. there are many men who are feminists around me i see them i see many 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 men as allies and uh, because you know what happens to women is not just a issue of women every hmm. woman who is uh, violated or is harassed or assaulted happens to be somebody's daughter happens to be somebody's wife happens to be somebody's sister and yes. happens to be somebody's uh, granddaughter you know for god's sake Yes. so the yes. men are equally concerned i mean they want i mean i personally have been in places in uttar pradesh and bihar and all where i've spoken to scores of people and there are men who have told me up front that you know why are you making serials like uh, saas bahu and all aap meri beti ki fail kahani kyu batate ho bar bar aap kyu nahi apni kahani kyu nahi sunate taaki meri beti bhi thoda soch samajh sake aur meri beti bhi kuch kar sake apni zindagi mein मुझे तो उसकी शादी करनी पड़ेगी यू नो क्योंकि मेरे को चाहिए कि वो सिक्योर रहे दैट शी इज गोज इन टू समान सेफ हैंड्स बट इफ आई वॉज गिवन अ चॉइस आई वॉन्ट माई डॉटर टू वर्क आई वॉन्ट माई डॉटर टू बी एन इंडिपेंडेंट वुमन बट आई डोंट हैव अ चॉइस बिकॉज द वर्ल्ड आई एम लिविंग इन इज सो अनसेफ फॉर हर सो एज अ एज अ ब्यूटिफुल फादर द ओनली चॉइस आई एम लेफ्ट विद इज टू टाई हर अप इन चेंज एंड दीज आर पीपल फ्रॉम विलेजेस एंड रूरल इंडिया हु आर टॉकिंग लाइक दैट so you know we take we we take uh, our audiences our masses for granted they are at the brunt they face the brunt of all of this you know they face the reality and they are far more wiser than we are right. so it's right. something that needs to be corrected at some point which finally makes everybody just heave a sigh of relief and say okay like you know a man say my daughter is safe a woman say i am safe and uh, so life goes on for everybody mm. yeah um, you know lastly uh, tell me how have you been uh, coping up since you Good spoke question out. i would say you know i've had to crawl back into the scene because uh, post the me too movement which i of course got a lot of support uh, from mm. certain quarters mm. and uh, I've, of course i had lawyers who came and stood by me and gave me pro bono support and everything my industry uh, by and large discarded me and mm-hmm. i was not a nobody right so i'm also somebody who's done a lot of work and who's got a name who's got you know a history behind me i've created my own legacy because i've not come here with any legacy mm-hmm. so uh, it was quite difficult in the initial initial time i think 2019 2020 um were tough because the work i was doing was suddenly snatched away from me and i had nothing you know mm-hmm. i was suddenly staring at a blank wall but mm-hmm. you know like they say providence covid happened and then everybody was in the same scoop as i was <laughs> for mm-hmm. covid reasons right yeah. so yeah. i was like well this is like god's way of telling everybody that you know you shun certain people now come down to earth and realize that you are also in the same state as them Yeah. But um, yeah, and that I think, like they say, when you're in the toughest times, is when you innovate and create the best. And uh, what happened with me was the creation of the Daily Eye, which mm-hmm. has become a formidable online media today. Uh, mm-hmm. I worked at it, and I learned digital media, and I 
did courses online during the covid years and i learned graphics art i'm a very keen photographer and i've fallen in love with photography like immensely even more now so uh yeah and i'm back on my feet and i'm back with my creativity i'm doing a lot of good work uh, so uh irrespective of whether anybody includes me or not however much they may exclude me i'm doing my thing and i'm living a life the way i want to live right right thank you so much ma'am for speaking to me and it was a pleasure and i cannot express my gratitude to you for being so thank brave you. and coming Thank forward so because much. it is not easy i know it is not easy you know when the time comes it's pretty easy shishti you know that's what i tell everybody when hmm. uh, there is when you're pushed to a wall you fight back yeah and you have the courage and the weaponry it's your arm yeah. so never underestimate yourself as a woman or as women so yeah. i did just what was my duty to do and thank yeah. you so much for having me on my sh- on your show it was really thank nice thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank bye. you so much bye, bye.